Good evening, everybody. It's Andy from Snow Camps Europe here with a Sunday Ski Cast. Now, as you may have seen, um, we haven't promoted the Sunday Ski Cast this week as um, our guest um, was unable to um, confirm their availability. So um, instead of leaving you with absolutely nothing, I thought I would jump on myself and let you ask me some questions. Um, now, as always, if you're watching on Facebook, please do like, share and comment or ask your questions in the comments below. Also, feel free to uh, host a watch party. And also, if you're watching on YouTube, then please do subscribe. Hit the like button. And also, if you want to ask any questions, if you're watching on YouTube, then just put them in the comments and I will see them. Um, yeah, so you can ask me uh, literally anything within reason. Um, skiing, ski teaching, about the snow camps, about Zalamzika Prun. Um, just let's uh, see where it goes. Uh, maybe do 30, 45 minutes um, and hopefully uh, we'll get plenty of questions. But I'm not too sure how it's going to go because we only really confirmed this this morning. But I have got one question in already. Um, okay, cool. Uh, I just wanted to check the question before putting it up on the screen. So Nikki, she's a regular watcher of the Sunday Ski Cast. Um, just wanted to say first, I'm really glad you did it. Did what, Nikki? But how did you get into skiing and then ski teaching? Oh, good question. So, um, yeah, I first um, started skiing when I was 11. Um, I basically started high school, um, like everybody does at that kind of age. And um, on literally the first day, we got given, uh, or I got given, then I realized most people got given, we all got given these envelopes. And I thought I'd been in the school for like a day and I was in trouble. So I took it home and left it in a place where it, it may or may not get found. And um, anyway, uh, my mum read the letter and uh, I was like a little bit petrified I was about to get a slap because uh, I'd done something wrong on the first day of school. And it was actually, um, they needed more kids for the school holiday to make the numbers up. So they'd opened it for the first years, which they didn't normally do. And anyway, um, I was basically told I wasn't going because there wasn't enough money, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So I basically went out and got myself a job because I, I liked the sound of it. So um, I went and got a job at the local supermarket bringing in the trolleys. And um, I saved all of my wages to pay £132, it was, um to go on a, a ski all day with the school so that's how i started skiing um and then i continued to work and paid um so i could go each year with school and then uh, at the age of 14 i started skiing on a dry ski slope uh the oval in bevington um where they filmed chariots of fire not on the ski slope but on the running track and uh, i skied there and then that's where i kind of got into the ski teaching thing i did um some dry ski slope qualifications so yeah there you go that hopefully answers your question. Hello, Rachel. Nice to meet you today, Rachel. Um, I was doing my dog walk live this morning and Rachel said she was at Schneiderei and uh, I walked past and then Rachel came up to our, our um, Yausen station in Bad Fush today with her two kids who are here training with a Dutch race team. So hello, Rachel. Um, thanks for popping up today. You said you'd sent me those photos, Rachel. I haven't seen them. Um, so let me know where you've sent them to, um, Adina. Hey, Andy, do snow camps Europe do snowboard camps? Ha ha. We can if we are, if they are requested. Yes. Um, fortunately that I wouldn't be the person teaching them because as you know, I'm, I'm too far too good at a snowboard to even think about teaching people. But, um, yeah, we can, we can do snowboard, snowboard camps. We can do snowboard privates. We can do beginner weeks, intermediate weeks. We can do advanced. We can do off-piece weeks. We can do pretty much whatever you want as long as we have got the numbers to run the courses. Um, so there you go, Adina. Uh, what else we got? Beatrice. Hi, Andy. Do you have any official uniform that next week there will be more traveling restrictions? Do you have any official uh, official information? Sorry, do you have any official information that next week there will be more traveling restrictions for tourists coming outside Austria? Okay, so is your question related to people coming into Austria or to people leaving Austria? Um, at the moment, if you are coming from the UK, you are having to quarantine or have a valid uh, negative COVID test 
and a certificate. As of the 15th, we, are, we all think that that will be dropped and you will be able to enter normally. But that is not confirmed. Okay, so we've got another three days until they make that announcement. But this is what a lot of people in Austria believe is going to happen, that you will be able to travel without quarantine, without a negative test. Some people I saw yesterday, they went to their doctors, said that they had had symptoms, they got tested, got a piece of paper, and then got in the car and drove to Austria, and they got in no problem. Um, and therefore, you, they didn't have to pay for the test. So there's a little loophole there if you don't want to pay for a test. I believe you can fly into Vienna Airport. You can have a test for 150 euros, and you can um, wait in Vienna Airport for about three hours for the results if you wanted to do it that way. Hopefully, that has answered your question. If it hasn't, then, uh, oh, you are coming from Romania. Ooh, Romania. I think there still are restrictions on Romania and Bulgaria. Um, if Alison is watching, Alison may have more information. But what I will do is um, I will look into it for you, and I'll, I'll answer it in the comments um, later this evening or tomorrow. Um, if you're coming from Romania, because that is slightly different. And I've got a funny feeling that there is there is currently or there is going to be some sort of restriction for Romania. Let us get back to you. But if Alison's watching, maybe Alison can put something in the comments also, because she is a lot more up on this than I am. There you go. So you sent them me on Facebook Messenger. Did you send them to me or to Snow Camps? Um, where's it gone? Sorry, Rachel. Did you send them to me, me personally, or to snow camps? Um, I will have another look later. Tracy, what you, uh, what's Tracy asking? Steve, I've not missed your question. I will come up to it in a second, mate. Um, Tracy, hi, Andy. We are supposed to be coming at the end of July. Are things running like... Yes, um, rafting's been open. Oh, when did Josh start work? Two, two weeks ago, I think they started rafting. So Josh Willans, um, one of my friends and colleagues, he is a rafting guide in Taxenbach. And yeah, and also um, Jonas from uh, Frost Rafting. He is rafting as well. Um, I believe the ZLMZ centers are all rafting. So yeah, rafting's working. The lifts are running. We're still wearing masks in lifts and public transport. Um, guided hikes are all running. The, the Sigmund Thung clam the gorge at the top of uh, the village uh, they're doing the monday night tours they're doing the night with the different lights um the water show the laser show in zlmz is running the only things that aren't running are the big festivals and the wednesday night festivals so mitvok if you've been here before tracy um in the summer we have uh, the Wednesday night festival in ZLMZ. That's not running this year. However, what a lot of the bars are doing is they're individually putting on entertainment on a Wednesday night. So they're kind of having a mini, mini Mitvok festival. So, um, but everything else is open and working. The Gross Glockner Road is open. Krummel Waterfall is open. Um, trains are running as normal, et cetera, et cetera. You, you wouldn't really notice anything had gone on at the moment in Austria. Um, the figures are on the increase slightly from where they were before lockdown finished. Um, the, yesterday, there's 1,078 cases and over half of them were in Upper Austria. Salzburg land had gone from something like 32 cases to 48 in about three days. So again, not massive. Um, so I think as long as people keep doing what they should be doing, don't get too close to one another. Keep washing your hands and be sensible in tra public transport. I don't think anybody's going to have a problem. Okay, 21 people watching and six likes. Give me some love, people. Hit that heart button. Okay, um, Tracy, I hopefully that um, answers your question. If you are heading over at the end of July um, and you need any help with anything, then just contact me um, and I can help you out. Not a problem. Uh, Beatrice. 
Yes, we'll have the test before coming. I think if you have a negative test, Beatrice, I don't think you'll have a problem. But as I said, just, just double check on the deal for people coming from Romania. Okay, let's go back up to Steve. Cheers, everybody. Um, hi, Andy. We must have a bit of kit. Do you have with you on the mountain? Oh, what must have bits of kit do I have with me on the mountain? Spare gloves, dry socks, walkie talkies, emergency harrow bones. Um, okay, harrow bones, no. However, nearly all of the kids' teachers will have them. So whenever I see them get them out in the lift, then I always um, will steal a few. So I will uh, get my harrow bow fix. Uh, I don't have any dry socks with me. I don't have any walkie talkies. Um, on my person, I have a first aid kit because as a ski teacher, we have to have a first aid kit. I have my ID, my ski teacher license, a um, bit of money uh, or my card. Um, and then one pair of goggles, couple of lenses in a bag in the Alpine Centre from a glacier. I don't typically carry a spare pair of gloves, but there may always be a second pair of gloves in my bag, but they're not there to be a spare pair. They're just dependent on the temperature, which ones I'm going to wear that day. Um, but uh, other than that, I just ski ski with what I've got on and what's in my pockets. Um, if I'm on the glacier, then I leave a bag in the Alpine Centre. And if I'm down in the village, I leave the bag in the car. So I take whatever I think I'm going to need for the day. Cereal bar, actually. I'll always have a cereal bar with me up until about 11 o'clock. And then I'll have my 11s on the lift. Um, and that's about it, really. That is about it, Steve. How about you? What do you take with you, Steve? Um, where are we up to? Brilliant, Beatrice. Do that. If you make it, then, yeah, go up to the Housen Station. We will be open. Um, very busy day today. I'm actually really bleeding tired. We, uh, we got uh, very, very busy for about two and a half, three hours. Yeah, very, very busy. Um, it's very nice. It is very nice at there, Beatrice. You, you've been before, I guess. Uh, Tracy, thanks, Annie. Very helpful. No worries, Tracy. Always happy to help. Um, I wish you had had Haribo. Well, <laughs> just imagine, though, Nikki, if I had a bag of Haribo every day of the week to give out, how much money I would spend? I'd have to, I'd have to put the price of the. Um, the ski camp's up, wouldn't I? Um, Alex. Hey, Alex. Alex Chaherney. How are you, fella? Hello, mate. How long have you had a mohawk for? And where is, where is bad at all by the... Now, uh, mate, um, yeah, so mohawk came at the start of season two, so seven years ago. Um, it was a bet with Yordi, who I was living with. Um, we were talking about it. Um, I was normally, I normally shaved my head for about oh, 20 odd years. And I, I just shaved in a mohawk when I did it uh, one, one night. And he said, I dare you to keep it for the rest of the season. And I said, well, if you cut it so it's straight, then I will keep it in. So we literally got some uh, duct tape. We put it on my head. And originally the, the, the mohawk didn't come all the way around. It was like it was here. It was just the top. And, um, yeah, he cut round the duct tape, and that was the start of it. And I had that up until oof, Fabian Steeple's wedding, which was, I think, two years, three years ago now. So I had it for a few years. It got very, very long. It was kind of up here. And, um, yeah, cut it for the wedding, then regrew it back. And then, foolishly, I cut it back in December last year, um, which was a big mistake because it was epic at the time. Um, but it's, get, it's getting back. It's not far off it. By this winter, it's going to be good. But now it's not inspired by Glenn Plake. Um, I am a big Plake fan because I grew up watching him in things like Maltese Flamingo and Blizzard of Oz. Um, but no, it's not. It's not related to uh, Mr. Plake. Um, now, Alex, you went off to work in France last season. How did that go? Did you finish your level four? I think you were aiming for. Let me know. Let me know. Um, Steve's got another question, or he's telling me something. Always gloves, liners, and mittens. Snood. A snood? <laughs> snood. Because <laughs> I get very cold. Light, 
low light lens, cool beanie, and some banging tunes. Ah, he listens to music on his snowboard. Um, a snood. I've not heard a snood be called a snood for quite some time. Um, I think pretty much everyone, everyone refers to a snood now as a buff, albeit a buff is a trademarked product. And uh, I suppose they are snoods, aren't they? The generic term would be a snood or a, a neck tube, maybe. Colin Martin is saying, good evening, good evening, Colin. Um, as you will see, I am allowing people to ask me questions. Um, so I'm not too sure whether I want you to ask me a question, but feel free. Um, if anybody else is watching that's got a question, then let's have it. I'm just going to scoot back through the comments and see what else we've got. We're only up to 11 likes and we've got 25 people watching. So we got a new one. It's a neck gator. There you go, Steve. A snood is a neck gator. And buff is a particular brand of neck gator. Uh, funnily enough, um, if you've been um, over and skied with me with snow camps, you would have got your free gift. Last year we had backpacks. The year before we had bottles. This year it is probably going to be a neck gator. Um, what was Tonto's horse called? Oh, this is like a trick question, right? Um, the Lone Ranger horse was called Silver. So Tonto, did Tonto even have a horse? I don't know. I haven't got any, I haven't got an idea. If anybody knows the answer to that question, then put it in the comments below. But uh, that wasn't the kind of questions I was thinking of, um, really. Uh, no trick, Tonto. <clears throat> Oh, correct. What's correct? What is correct, Colin? Um, but I don't know what Tonto's horse was called. Carl Meredith. Hi, hopefully we can ski together sometime in the upcoming... Hopefully we can, Carl, yes. Because I remember the last time you were here, I was stuck in the office. Um, <laughs> but... Um, yeah, hopefully we can call. Um, let me know when you're coming over um, and if you are bringing your dad with you again. Um, Christoph Lentz, what, what's he asking? What's your take on skiing? Oh, skiing. <laughs> so my take on skiing in jeans. Uh, and we are talking denim jeans, not ski pants that look like jeans, right? Because the ski pants that look like jeans look hideous. In my opinion, don't be offended if you have a pair of ski pants that are meant to look like jeans. But skiing in jeans, yeah. Pfft. You shouldn't be doing it, should you? You shouldn't be doing it. Quite often I do like to see the old person in a pair of stretch jeans where they've got them tucked into their boots. Um, but, yeah, you shouldn't really be skiing in jeans, um, especially not in, like, deep, deep winter when you're going to fall over and get wet. They're not windproof. They're not going to keep you warm. Um, yeah, don't do it. It's not big. It's not clever. Um, and I, okay. well, eh, that said, I used to ski in jeans on a dry ski slope. So um, let's let's just refer to on snow. But uh, thanks for your question, Chris. Um, maybe maybe you've got another more sensible question. But they're coming from America. Do you favour skiing in jeans? Let me ask you. Christoph, do you favour skiing in jeans? <laughs> no surprise. No, and probably a leather jacket, no doubt. Because you, you get them in France, didn't you? I remember that when I went to France. You got a lot of people skiing in leather jackets. 25 people watching and only 14 likes. There's something wrong with these people. Hit the like button, please. <laughs> it does the algorithms the world of good. Hi, Chris. Um, enjoying this, obviously. Having a little bit of a laugh. Colin Martin, where are you? Here we go. The Lone Ranger's horse was indeed silver, and two did have Tonto did have a horse. And someone is saying it's called Scout. Mark is saying it's called Scout. Is that the name of the horse? Um, Colin? Bogus questions. Anyway, so Trump skiing in jeans. Nikki. What about skiing in sunglasses? Do you have an opinion? Uh, skiing in sunglasses, Nikki, is fine. Um, the, my issue is skiing uh, with sunglasses and a helmet. Um, so if you want to wear 
uh, a beanie and ski in sunglasses, or in the spring, I will ski with the, the hair and a pair of sunglasses. That is totally fine and cool and dandy. Obviously, you've then got to ask yourself the question, should you or should you not be wearing that helmet? Um, and that is a debate within itself. But skiing with sunglasses is fine. My issue is skiing with a helmet and sunglasses, which are not specifically made to be used with a helmet. So let's say a pair of aviator Ray-Bans, which you will get a lot of our Russian friends doing. And the reason for this is, if the arms of the glasses are inside the helmet and you hit something, a pole, another skier, your ski pole, whatever else it could be, you are relying on the bridge of the glasses to break and the glasses to fall forward and the arms to fall away. Now, if the arms are trapped in your helmet, this isn't going to happen. So the chances are the lenses are going to break, splinter, crack, whatever. This could result in your eyes being done in, basically. That is my issue with people skiing with sunglasses and helmets. Skiing with glasses and a beanie, put your arms on the outside of the beanie, a presto, not a problem. There you go. Every day, every day is a school day. Um, where was that one? We've got a few of you coming in. Uh, hi, Nick King. Yes, I am well, mate. And thank you for that video you sent me the other day. Very, very uh, enjoyable indeed. Mark Liddell, Scout is correct. Well done. Thanks for answering that for me. I'm rapidly running out of... Oh, no, I've got another one. Look. Woohoo! I thought I'd run out of beer, but I prepared a second just in case. I didn't think this would last so long. So what we got up next? Um... Mark is confirming he was correct. Alex, cheers, dude. France was great. Didn't finish my exams due to, uh, yeah, of course. I will be back in Capron next season and looking forward to it. Ah, cool. Are you coming back to work again or just for the preseason? Um, if there is a preseason, <laughs> let's hope there is a preseason. Um, Nick King, visor or sunglasses or contact lenses? <laughs> Don't understand the question, Nick, or is it a statement? A helmet with a visor, not for me, but I do see a lot of people using them. My, my main thing is if the visor is one that changes light with the light, then happy days, then you don't need to change your lens. But if I've got to change my whole visor over, then I've got to carry visors in my bag, which I wouldn't want to do. Uh, sunglasses, we've just talked about sunglasses or contact lenses. I would have thought if you had contact lenses, you might still need sunglasses. I don't know. But maybe. Oh, hang on. Glass lenses, not good. Ray-Bans are glass lenses. Exactly. Yeah. But even the plastic ones, and I have a lot of people saying when I talk about this, oh, you're talking rubbish, Rose. Most skiing sunglasses are Perspex. Well, yes, they are. But Perspex still splinters. Um, Adidas do make um, some sunglasses which are intended to be worn inside of um, a helmet. Um, they have a, a foam lining all the way around. They're very flexible, etc., etc., etc. But you look like an idiot because you have this big, what we call the punter's gap. Um, and therefore, even a pair that are specifically made for um, skiing with a helmet, I wouldn't use. And neither would any other um right-minded professional albeit you go to zadam z and they go oh they're all on it they're all they love it they love they love a pair of sunglasses and a helmet in zadam z uh, as do a lot of bayesy teachers you see a lot of these um bayesy trainers in photos promoting the courses and they're wearing sunglasses and helmets i'm not saying they can't ski i'm not saying they're not great trainers but you look like idiots sorry to say it but you do um Happy to help. Thanks, Nick. Um, just keep all that stuff coming my way, mate. It's always appreciative. Appreciated. Uh, Alex is coming back to Capron to work. Brilliant. Uh, and yes, fingers crossed. Yeah, so uh, there we have it so far. That's all, 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 all of our questions in. Um, in the meantime, uh, yeah, if you are uh, looking to book your ski holiday, Crystal Ski, as most of you will know, have got a 
two for one lift passed off her on. There's some people on a lift, two of them there. Look, they obviously got the, the, the deal. Um, you can get yourself a two for one lift pass. And this year, unlike last year, it's on any resort on any date. And I just believe that they have to be like for like lift passes. Now, if you combine this with a Snow Camps Europe beginner ski camp, you could save £440, I think I worded it out to be, uh, because you will save about 260 on your lift pass. And this would be for two people. 260 on your lift pass, and then you would both save £90 each on your ski camp. So um, worth, worth thinking about um, if you are... A, uh, if you're new to skiing and you want to do a beginner's week for everybody else on all of our other camps if you are doing what most of you normally do book your holiday with um, crystal get your lift pass um, two for one and then contact me for your ski hire and your lessons or camp and as always you'll get your discount um Colin Martin, how's the sausage shack going? Mate, the sausage shack, we were we were blazing today. Um, so Colin is referring to the Yowzen station that I opened. Um, well, we opened on the 1st of July and then we closed on the 2nd and then we reopened on um, Thursday of this week. Yeah, of what the week has just ended. Yeah, because uh, we opened and then on the Thursday, last Thursday, we had a massive storm, load of landslides, washed the road away. So the council had to build, rebuild the road, which is halfway up a mountain. But no, the sausage shack is uh, going well, mate. Um, didn't sell a massive amount of sausages today, but we did sell a lot of ribs because it was Sunday. So we do our, our special, we do a ribs board, half or a full rack. The first table that sat down ordered five and a half racks. Um, so yeah, all hell broke loose in the kitchen um, and outside on the barbecue. So that no, is good. It's good. Um, I'm up there on my own tomorrow. So because um, the Johnny who is helping me out, he is being interviewed by Belgium TV about the effect the virus has had on workers. And uh, basically, because our story is we are normally tour guides in the summer, but there are no British tourists to guide because Tui have cancelled the summer. This means um, we had to do something different or sit on benefits. And uh, we've opened the Yowson station and he's basically taking them around ZLMZ, introducing them to people who've had to do similar things. So, yeah, the Sausage Shack is going well. Nick King, two for one is an excellent deal. Last year, I actually kept the note and did not find a cheaper crystal price after it ended right up to last minute. Yep. Uh, end of the day, Nick, um, and everybody else, your lift pass is one of the most expensive um, parts of your ski holiday. Obviously, you've got your holiday, which I class as your, your flights, your um, transfer and your accommodation. And then you've got your your pay to play to ski, which is your lift pass, your hire and your, your, um, your lessons if you need hire and if you need lessons. Uh, but the lift pass is expensive. So if you can get a free one, then happy days. Now, on that subject, on my post um, where there is a link to the offer, um, if you were to use that link to then go and book your holiday, then I would actually make a small commission for snow camps. Obviously, we are a travel-related business, and then we work, we work with travel partners, and Crystal is one of them. So it is very much appreciated if when booking online, you use that link and I will get a small payment into the Snow Camps account. Um, choose a resort with high value of plastic. Yeah, yeah, why not? Why not? And that maximizes your um, saving. Yeah. But then also I would expect, say if you pe pick like Maribel or Teens, your overall holiday is going to be more expensive. And when you get there, you're going to spend more on beer and food, I would guess. Not that everybody spends money on beer, but ouch. Chin chin. Um, have we got any more questions? Oh, Nick's still here. We went to and their lift base. 303. Wow, that? it's a lot, isn't it? Um, I do think it's only Europe though, isn't it? You wouldn't be able to go to America on that deal. It's only Europe. So there you go, folks. Two for one lift passes from Crystal. Um, what else we got for you? In other news, it snowed on the glacier yesterday. Uh, Keith Webb, Facebook Ski Club, I believe, 
He's possibly taking his ski teacher exam tonight, uh, his theory. He has been up there um, the last week skiing in 30 degree heat. But yesterday they were up there in the snow. Totally agree, Nick. Beer is essential. It's uh, very important to a ski holiday. I think Colin Martin would agree with that. So, yeah, Keith Webb was up there. It was snowing yesterday. He sent me some pictures. Also, Melanie. I don't know if Melanie's watching. Are you watching, Melanie? Um, Melanie Meilinger, our Olympic mogul skier, she has been up there rebuilding a course um, for, the, I think, the last two days. And she will be doing some more on-snow training in the coming days. Nikki, what's the most memorable thing that happened to you during a ski lesson? Ooh. Mm. Just probably many, but the one that the one that springs to mind right now, and I think Mark, uh, who was on earlier, might have been with us at this point. I'm not sure if you were, Nikki, but we lost Sylvia. Sylvia somehow got lost. Um and then she kind of blamed it on me, but I don't believe it was my fault, but maybe it was. I don't know. So, yeah, losing Sylvia, which was about five years ago, maybe six. That was quite memorable. Um, uh, yeah, I, I would have to have a, a good old think about anything because that, that just sprung right to front of mind was losing Sylvia. So, uh, yeah, losing Sylvia. What was the most memorable thing that's happened to you, Josie? Yeah, yeah. I did. I also, well, yeah, another one is I taught Dennis Taylor's son how to ski in my very first season. Him and his sister were on a school holiday where I used to work. And um, yeah, Dennis Taylor's son. Um, in return, he was supposed to teach me how to play pool, but he didn't. Um, yeah. There you go. Colin is agreeing. Beer is important. Um, <laughs> don't, don't skimp on essentials. No, stay in the Bergheil, <laughs> skimp on your accommodation, but spend loads of money in Pavilion, uh, Nick. Good stuff. Okay, cool. So um, we've done two four lift passes. Um, early December ski camp. Um, we have got one running as always. Quite a bit of interest. Um, our March ski scamps are also. Um, we are getting a fair bit of interest um, and have a couple of bookings for the March dates. So if you are thinking of coming earlier or later in the season, then um, take a look at the dates for early December and March. As most of you will know who are watching, our camps are always on low season weeks. So they are the most inexpensive weeks of the season. So that's two weeks before Christmas, two weeks after New Year, one in the middle of March, and then um, one um, after Easter. So take a look on the website. I should have a website banner in case you don't know the URL. And yeah, um, back to, oh, my screen's gone all funny. Hang on, I've got to resize my screen. Uh, resize screen. Comments, I've just seen another comment come in. What did Sylvia's mother say? I can't, I, I don't, was there mother here, Mark? I can't remember. I just remember Sylvia was very upset that we had lost her. Or as I put it, she carried on skiing when we'd gone for lunch. And uh, it sounds like a plan, says Nick. Yeah, good stuff. Right, folks. Well, there you go. Unless there are any other um, half sensible questions other than what was the name of someone's horse, Colin Martin, um, maybe we call it a day. Um, Quite a few more questions than I was expecting, um, but all good, all good. Um, next next week, we have got Abby Bruce and uh, her teammate, Vicky. I can't remember Vicky's surname. Uh, Abby is a junior GB team racer, under 21s. Um, recently had a leg break injury, but I believe he's back on skis and is being trained by Christian Leitner from Kitzbühel. And along with uh, Vicky, um, Vicky, um, as I said in the live this morning, is Austrian or dual nationality, Austrian-British. Um, she 
used to live in Vienna and would do a 500k round trip to Zelmzi every weekend to ski with Ski Club Zelmzi because her father is from the area. And just before she um, entered her first FIS race, um, she actually um, moved away from the Austrian ski team, um, which she was skiing for, and she decided to ski for Team GB. So that's quite an interesting story that GB literally enticed, stole, took, I don't know what, what it was, a, an Austrian racer. Could be good for the team in the future years. But both of them, young athletes, training hard um, for the next winter season. They're going to be on talking about all of that next week. So get your questions in early. We will post a video in the coming days to promote that one. Um, Mark is saying that what did Suizman say is a song. Yes, Mark, it is. Um, I suppose. Um, Claire, hi. What's, what is the duck's name? <laughs> uh, <laughs> so the, the dog's name is, I hope she doesn't wake up when I say this because she sounds super, is Lollipop or Lolly Pops. <laughs> Oi, stop that. Oi, get off. Oi, leave it. <laughs> and, and a few other things in the mix. Um, I'm guessing that is your dog, Claire. Um, is that a... Looks like a Labrador, right? Gold, or gold retriever? No. Is it a Labrador? Tell me what it is, Claire. Looks like a Labrador. But she's, yeah, Lollipop. And she's named after... Um, I don't know if you ever saw... Uh, this is Britain. The main female character in This is Britain was called Lol. Um, which was short for lollipop. And, uh, yeah, Shane McGowan, I think, was the writer of that, wasn't he? Yeah, Dr. Hook, Mark, it was. I was just trying to think of it. I was thinking Leo Sayer for, for a minute, but it was Dr. Hook. But, yeah, Claire, um, lollipop, named after the character in uh, This is Britain. Uh, yeah, by Shane McGowan. Um, Dr. Hook. Can you sing it, Mark? So there we go, folks. Unless there are any more questions. Yes, she's a lab. Uh, yes, a lab. What's her name, Claire? We could keep this going for a while, can't we? What's your dog called? Come on, Claire. I think there's a 15 de second delay, so it might be a minute until Claire tells us her dog's name or his name. But yeah, okay, folks, we will call it there. Um, we will find out what the travel restrictions are for people coming from Romania for our question earlier and if anyone else has got anything else then let me know in the comments and i will answer because i'll be sat on the sofa watching the telly other than that i'll see you next week on a ski cast i'll be um, live uh, a couple of times this week if there is anything to <laughs> talk about <laughs> mark little she she said she's leaving today. God, they're singing a song together on the Ski Cast comments. Ah, an all-time low. Okay, folks, Andy for SoCamps Europe. Not the normal Sunday Ski Cast, but it was quite fun. Um, thanks for your questions. Thanks for watching. <coughs> wow, we got 23 likes and 21 watches. That's, uh, that's good. Um, so, catch you all next time with... Uh, Abby and Vicky, our Team GB athletes of the future. Bye for now, folks. Enjoy your Sunday evening. Catch you all later. Stay safe, stay healthy, and all of that jazz. Chin, chin.